good things. Good things were happening. Um, forgot to say uh, a happy shout out to Wes last time. So, hello, Wes. Wes. Shoot you with my guitar. Um, yeah, I've been talking to a lot of customers lately. We've been doing a lot of chats and stuff. It, it does get a little time consuming, you know, because like each one is kind of like a friend and this and that. And it's hard to, you know, spend this much time on hats when it's weekend and I should, you know, spend time with the family and stuff. So, you know, we try to keep it brief, but um, I've been doing a lot of, you know, just keeping my finger on the pulse and hearing what customers are going through, what they're looking at. And, and it's nice to hear what they, you know, just to have more contact with customers in that way. Um, I'm talking a lot with Michael, um, doing a lot of chatting, virtual talking with Patrick. He's an awesome dude. Um, you know, Wes and I talk a lot. Daisy um, spoke to Maddie. Uh, oh, this one viewer of mine, um, you probably have seen his comments once or twice. Nati Bush Doctor. Nati, like Nati Dread. Uh, Nati Bush Doctor um, makes this really interesting hat product. And I believe he sells them on Instagram or Etsy, one or the other. Uh, I'm sure you could find it if you just look up the word. Um, wow, what are these things called? They're called stingers, right? He makes these things, they're stingers. It's kind of like like a metal, sort of like a, like a, almost like a metal bobby pin kind of thing, right? Like a, uh, a metal flat rod, like a, with a point, right? Like an arrow. And on the top of that is like a metal medallion, almost looks like, you know, like this penny or something on here, right? So let's say this is the medallion, it's a little bigger and it's something really cool. Like let's say it's got a, a guitar on it or a peace sign or some sort of Native American uh, artwork, right? Kind of like engraved, you know, like it looks like almost like a coin, like engraved or, or lasered or metal shopped in there, stamped, I don't know how they do it, but anyway, kind of like this coin thing. Right, and underneath it is like a flat stick, right? It's almost like as long as like a tie bar, but like flat, not like a pole, um, not like a lollipop stick, it's flat, and then at the end has a point, like an arrow. And you take those and you stick them in your hat. It's kind of like it goes in where a feather would go, but it's like this little piece of jewelry. And the guy that just like invented this new thing. Okay, it's not like, you know, inventing the wheel or anything, you know, but yeah, how about that, right? This is one of my viewers that's like, you know, just getting into vintage hats and, you know, and his creativity is just like, you know, branching off this way, that way, that way, and branching and branching and flowering. Like, the, you know, those huge trees that are all connected and they make like this whole forest, but they're connected to this one root. That's like what's happening now. And he's, you know, he started a little business and he's making these things called stingers. And um, I believe you could find them, yeah, you know, he'll be able to tell you. It's either Etsy or, um, I did see it, this link. Uh, either Etsy or it was maybe Instagram, like probably Etsy. And um, it's really nice stuff. Stingers, um, you could also look up Natty Bush Doctor, um, try to find his uh, profile. And then it probably has a link to his, you know, his company, very cool things. It's kind of like, you know, you'd have your bow over here and just where a feather would come out, you'd have this cool like little medallion, you know, sort of like a family crest or something, and they look good, you know. Um, I thought it was interesting, you know. So you could have like, you know, cool like Hendrix hat with some feathers and like, you know, a little piece of jewelry in the middle to set it off, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would like to see that with stuff like, like opals and moonstones and like, um, I don't know, something that's like really nice, like, I don't know, maybe a little LED light or something, you know? Something really neat and trippy, like um, those prosthetic glass eyes, those would be really neat. Rather than just gold jewelry, which is classy and probably more sellable, but yeah, I'd like to see some freaky stuff on there too. That would be cool, you know? Um, I would definitely do a, uh, yeah, something like that, like one of the eyeballs, that would look awesome. Um, yeah, so like how do you mount a piece of jewelry? You have to use a, um, a pin, right? So the pin stabs the bow somewhere. You know, there are ways to do it behind that little cross piece, 
so you don't see the hole. But this way, he's adding jewelry to the hat without making a hole in the band, which I think is good. No perforations, it just tucks in. Um, well done. So uh, just give you a plug. And then also uh, Michael, uh, another viewer, is uh, started has started a really neat Facebook group. If you guys need a place to like, you know, hang out, and show off your hats, see other people's hats, uh, and learn things, or ask a question, maybe you uh, I don't know, you have a question. You don't know how to fix this, or you don't know what to do because this problem is you know acting up. Go there and see what all the hat nerds have to say. Congregate and stuff. Uh, I've joined up and I've helped a couple of people, you know, one person with a crushed derby, another person. And, um, you know, I'm doing that all the time, but um, this is a place where you could kind of subscribe to the group, become part of the group, and, you know, post once or twice or something, and then just watch it for a while and just see, um, you know, see what other people are wearing. You know, even if you're not like a poster guy, you can just sort of, you know, introduce yourself, say hi, and um, from there, see if you want to... Uh, contribute or not. Not everybody here is a Facebook group, uh, social media kind of person. I understand that, but um, he's a really nice guy, and uh, in this uh, pandemical kind of climate, sometimes it's good to congregate virtually rather than uh, having, you know, parties, get-togethers, um, which sadly is, uh, you know, hard to do right now, impossible to do, unless, you know, everybody's inoculated, what do you call it, vaccinated. So, um, it's going to happen soon, though. You know, I think by the summer there'll be some grandma and grandma and grandpa action and stuff happening. So, it'll be good. It'll be a good uh, Independence Day. All right. Um, what do we talk about today? Does anybody have any topics they want to talk about? Hmm. Let's see what we can talk about. Um, let's talk a little bit about... I have no idea what to talk about. Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, some of the styles um, that I have, and um, you know it's funny. A lot of times I go on on these, uh, I turn on the videos and I press record, and I have no topic, and it happens like 30 seconds before. Yeah, I don't rehearse anything. None of, none of the songs. I usually don't prepare much. Sometimes I have a couple of notes, you know, but that's it. Um, generally nothing. Um, maybe I'll, I'll play now. Thank you. 
All right, let's put this baby down. It's distracting. Okay. There is actually something I wanted to go over with you guys. And what it is actually is deepening your crown. Okay. Deepening your crown is something that you can do on all sorts of hats. You can do it on a center crease. When you do it on a center crease, okay, here's your center crease. You'll make it right in here, a little oval. Something like, let's try it. Like that. Like a little sausage shape with your fingers. That's the shape I'm doing behind. Okay. There you go, okay. So the idea is what you're gonna do to deepen this crown, you wanna make it deeper, but from the person's viewpoint, you want them to see no change, okay? That change is way in here. All it's gonna do is instead of the hat balancing up here, it's gonna lower down to the right position. And that won't be seen because that's above the head, okay? All right. So what you want to do is steam the center, this whole black area here. See the, the shadow? Steam that all. In other words, keep the, the perimeters, the outside, keep that hard. Soften the middle with hot steam. It's hard to do, but you got to try to do it. You got to get a direct source of steam if you can. If you can't do it, just try your best. Heat this part up a lot. Um, whatever you can do, you can do. I don't know what else you can do. Uh, just don't burn yourself. Steam it, get it super hot, and then from the inside, push up into a nice, neat, oval or rectangle shape using your hands. Try to get it the right angle, so it's the same angle as the crease. See, now I got it right, okay? Don't go too high. If you go too high, you're gonna pop it out. Okay, this is good right here. Now the idea is you soften the middle, so the, only the middle is gonna open up when you press it very gently. You need a gentle touch, then you got to keep it still while it cools, okay? So you steam it, you stick your hand in, get it as high as you can without it popping out, hold. Now let it dry, let it dry while you keep your hands, keep your hands on your knee or something so you could steady it and keep it perfectly still. You know, you do it in a sitting position, it's easier to put it on a tabletop, whatever. Just steady your hands somehow. I, I do it on my knee like this. I mean, you don't have to, you could do it in the air. It's not that hard, but it's gonna be hard to keep it really still that way. Then, when it's deep enough, you, know, you put the hat on, you'll have that little crease. Also, you can make that crease go away whenever you want. You just push it down, it's gone. And it just appears when your head goes in it. So it doesn't even look modified. So you, you could take that and you know, whenever you want, just get rid of it. Um, I mean, of course, a way to stop bumping into to the top is to tighten the hat. If you make it tighter, the hat will sit up higher and you won't hit that bump anymore. But yeah, it'll be too tight and it'll look goofy and leave a line on your head and stuff. So the best thing to do is just deepen it by just making the crown deeper. Soften the area in the middle where you want it to raise. Okay, you're not doing it so much in the front of the hat here where you're pinching it. You're doing it more in the back area where your head sits. If you think about it, your head sits in this whole area here, and then this little chunk in the front is not on your head, okay? So don't worry so much in here. Get it in here. That's That back is where you want that, that little bubble to be, bubble crown, okay? You got it now, right? In the back. All right. Now, it should be long enough, you know? And, and practice it before you steam, you know? Practice it. See how high it goes, or steam it once, practice, you know? If you know it'll only go this high, if you pop it out that high, it pops up. Okay, start again. Okay, you know where to stop. Okay, now if you want to continue this, hold it, let it dry, let it dry, and then do it a second time. Steam your bubble, and then push it up a slight bit more. You should get some results. Uh, if it keeps popping out, just stop, okay? What you can do is, while the hat, you make that bubble, right? While it's drying, and it's like, Hot, but not so hot that it'll burn your head, take it off, put it on your head, and trace around that bubble now. And you'll be able to make as deep as you want. You put this to the area you want. Say, I want this to be right near my ear, okay? So you push it down to there, 
check the other side right above my ear. I don't want bashing into my ear. And then you trace around. Around that, that old kind of like, you know. And that's it. You could deepen it that way. Okay. Now, when you're doing it on a teardrop, it's the same exact thing. But what you're doing is this little area here is what you're raising. That whole little center, central teardrop, that's what you want to raise. Okay, you don't want to raise this part so much, just the middle, see? Think of it as like a speaker, you know, that's kind of beating like that. So you want this middle part to beat, to go up deeper, okay? But you want it to do so in an attractive way, that it doesn't look all bulbous and stretched out. You want it to be the same kind of shape, same kind of thing, but just higher. So what you do, again, steam the center. You want to steam this whole thing, and you want to steam in here too, okay, all of that. But you try not to steam the perimeters. Let's keep this hard if we can. That we don't want to move. We don't want the hat's shape to change. We don't want to lower the crown. We don't want to raise the crown, none of that. We want the crown to stay put. But this center part, we're going to soften that so that we can push it up with our fingers while it's soft, hold it, and then let it dry and stiffen up again in the higher place. So. You push the whole thing up, try to push it up with your knuckles, get, you know, so you're not poking like one finger up. You want to push the whole thing up flat. You use one finger, two finger, whatever you feel is right to get a good shape. Push it higher. Again, don't do it so high that it pops out. Start again. Okay, get it to a good spot. Now hold it still. Hands on your knee. Steady it and don't move. If you want to get better results, hold it in front of a fan flash dry it. Now, just point it at this area, really, you know, hard, cool fan. It's easier that way. So you're heating it up to soften it, manipulate it to the right spot, and then cool it so that it hardens again. It's like a plastic coating that you're melting and then hardening again. Melting, moving the hat, hardening again. So you want a tighter pinch, you melt this area, you pinch it, and you hold, hold, hold hold as long as you can. You know, hold it until you think it's like dry. So just hold, hold, hold forever and ever. And then just hold it, I don't know, a minute maybe. Then let go and it sticks, you know. So that's what the uh, stiffener does. Your hat doesn't feel stiff and it's all floppy and too soft. You gotta stiffen it first. That's a whole other video. Stiffening, you have to cover up the sweatbands and the outer bands if you're doing, you don't wanna get uh, spray there. And you don't want to get spray here, more importantly. You'll mess up your sweatband and kind of ruin the hat. No spray there. So I put a hat jack in first, which covers like, you know, 85, 90% of the of the sweatband. And then it also acts as a handle too, so you can move it around. Um, I cover the sweatband. I spray the bottom with hairspray. Use ultra super, like, you know, ultra hold, super hold, whatever's the strong stuff. Spray it. Give it a good spritz, uh, let it harden. Again, only do it if your hat is too soft and you're getting problems. Don't just stiffen it because, eh, should I stiffen it, Kat? No, don't. Don't do stuff to it unless it's absolutely necessary. The best way to get your hats to live a long, long time is to just keep them off the brim, keep the brim snapped like this, upside down, or in the box, upside down. Hung up is also good, it's like, you know, kinda good too. Um, for the brim, definitely not as good for the crown because we tend to pick it up usually by the crown off the, off the wall. So picking it up in the same place over and over and over will wear that place out. But um, that's it. Keep your hats upside down. They'll last forever. Don't have to do all kinds of stuff like stiffening, steaming. Avoid those things unless you're backed into a corner and have to do it. Um, we all get bored and we love hobbies, we love our hats and we like to just experiment with stuff. But keep in mind that steaming it, it's just as easy for that steam to open up these pinches and they'll just, just kind of open from the mist in the air. And now you just lost all sort of like, uh, what's the word? The definition. You lost all definition in your pinches because it's just the mist in the air, the steam in the air just makes that open up. Okay? So then when you stop steaming, you're going to have to, you know, let it 
it dry like this, hold it and stuff. I'm going to get those pinches back. So in other words, steaming can open shapes up and mess them up just a little easier than it is for you to fix stuff. If you're going to steam, you steam in one little area. It's going to be like, you want this brim to snap down? Okay, so let's let's work on this area. We're going to steam in here intensively, but we're not going to let the steam bounce off the crown or bounce off the rest of the brim and make the brim curl or something. It might do nothing, but it might affect the brim badly. You never know. Um, you don't want to take a chance. So... Um, Always steam with your brim up. If it's a uh, snap brim, never steam like this. Um, you know, although you want it to look like this, I believe you steam things up and you get this looking good and right. The flange looks right. See how it's... Okay, this, this brim should look like this. Okay? It's gravity that's making this happen because I wore out all the stiffener in my brim. The stiffener was holding it up into a flange like that, a combination of the stiffener and the mold that it was blocked on, the, the uh, block. Okay, now that the stiffener is gone, it's just, it's falling, nothing's holding it together. Okay, so let's say I wanted to spray it, I would cover this up with a hat jack or with whatever, you know, you put, I showed you before, take a big ball of uh, paper or tissue, put it in there, cover the sweatband, you know, and that's it. Make sure it's not on the felt itself or the straw, okay? Now, spray this to get this harder. One thin coat of Ultra Super Hold Hairspray. I used Rave, I used Suave, and I've used Aquanet. I like the first two brands the best, but the third one is generally okay. First two is generally a little bit more mistier spray, but the newer Aquanets also come out misty too. Um, you spray it, you let it harden very hard. Wait for an hour or something. Uh, a little bit less in a fan, wait two hours, wait overnight, let it dry, and then start steaming, okay? What I want to do is take this out now, okay? Actually, before it dries, you want that out. You want to air dry, get it out. Okay, so if I want this flange to be like this, okay, that's what I want, because if I want a healthy snap in the bottom, Okay, right now, the, the snap actually looks good, despite its flaws or whatever, so I probably wouldn't mess with it. But let's say it did look crappy and, you know, I needed to fix it. That's the problem there. This flange should look like this, okay? So it needs to be stiffened. What I would do is stiffen it and then just leave it upside down and see if that does it, just the gravity. I would even help it. I would push it along just a little. So let's see if it dries with a little bit more of a scoop, like a curve, you know? Just from the weight of the, the spray, the water, and the hemp itself. Or you could just move it along a little and see what you could do to get that brim right. Okay, then when it's dry, you find it, you hit here with, with steam right in the hinge, right in there, okay? Don't let the steam hit this other stuff here, okay? Remember, steam, when you hit it, it's going to go up, okay? So keep the rest of the hat below it. Don't put the rest of the hat above it where the steam is going to go and just bang into the brim and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Steam travels up, okay. What you do is steaming in the hinge and pushing back here. Okay, you open your hand like Spider-Man and you make that flange how it should be. Push it, okay? Get the flange back in all the areas, let it dry. Dry it in a fan if you want, hold it to the fan. Stand there and listen to music for five minutes. Fan dry it like this. Or just push it like this and then just do a little steaming. You should be able to get just a little steam. should get it back into place. Okay. Once it's like up there and it looks nice and even, you could do the tabletop method, which I told you. It's when you hold it against the tabletop and you do something like that, kind of like that. Yeah. Get everything, you steam the brim, the whole brim, and you put it against the table, rest your fingers on top of it, and just get a flat edge. Okay? Don't press too hard. Okay, I put my fingers generally like this to keep the flange flangey and then to guide all of this against the tabletop flat. Do that. Now I'm not pushing hard because I don't want to flatten out the brim. Keep it arced but even, and you're good. It stiffens up, and that, you know, 
when it's all stiff, it'll stiffen with a nice arc like this. And then when it's got a nice curve, it breaks properly and it looks right. So in other words, the healthier it looks up, the better it's going to look down. So if your hat is looking wrong when you do this, there's something going on. You know, it just doesn't look right. Or, you know, or maybe it's just like off-center or whatever. If there's some problem with the way your brim is breaking when it goes down, when you flip it up, it'll kind of show you where the problem is. It's just a simpler shape this way. You could tell what's what's out of whack, what's not even. Um, the first thing you want to do is get that brim up, okay? So you, you get the, the, it sags, it's just common. They all do this. It starts off there, the stiffener gets soft and it lets go and it starts going down. First thing you're gonna do is, if it's felt, tape it down with tape because you don't want to spray on dirty felt. You'll be sealing that dirt in there forever. Tape it down really good, waste a whole lot of tape, do the edges to the top, everything. Tape it down so it looks neat and west. Do that to your um, your light felt crushable hat. You got a Bozeman or whatever. I notice a lot of lint on there. Packing tape will make that thing look brand new. Believe me. I've gotten like some good $20 tips just for taping down hats, you know. It makes a super old hat look brand new. Just some packing tape. Got to use it a lot. Wipe it. Dab it. Use it like a sponge. The edges. Everything. Get in here. Use that tape and get every single piece of dust off that hat. When you think it's clean, do it more. So you see nothing on that tape coming off. And your hat will look great. Especially wool felt. Wool attracts dust like crazy. Fur felt, less. Fur felt will take a hat brush. Wool felt, if you have a hat brush, don't even bother using it. It's completely useless on a wool felt. Um, tape is what's going to do it. So if you have wool felt hats and you're using a hat brush, uh, it might be fun for you, but it's doing zilch, zero. All you have to do is get some uh, tape, good packing tape. Start in the edges, get all the edges clean, keep rotating your tape, clean sides, rotate your tape. And when you finish, do the front of the brim, tape it down, do the side of the brim, you know what I'm saying? Do all the brim and just Keep changing tapes, tape rings, make little rings. Do the crown all the way around, you know. Do the top, pop this out, get in these little ridges here, get underneath. You gotta get everything, especially on the edge. Welted edges carry a lot of uh, lint on wool felt, so light felts and stuff. Get them with packing tape, the thing will look brand new. Um, raising the crown on these, Every, everyone's a little different, okay? A center crease, you saw what we did. Right in the middle here, you're gonna hide a bubble. So nobody's gonna see it, okay? We have a hat called the Classic Panama, which is, it looks like a center crease, but it's actually what they call a bubble crown. What it is is a center crease with a hidden bubble to deepen it, okay? What I mean by hidden bubble is, the shape is 100% center crease. It doesn't look like a teardrop, okay? When you put it up at, at eye level here, it's just a center crease. But when you look at it from a bird's eye view, there's a little bubble in here. What that does is, rather than having it jut into the, see how it's jutting in? Oh, I forgot to tell you, I pulled the sweat band out of one of these. So one has a band, one doesn't. Eh, it doesn't matter, I could always put it back in easily. But uh, yeah, I'm a little nuts like that. Um, that's the deal, okay? so. Um, the center crease and the open road cattleman crease are going to raise the same way with this little, uh, what do you call it, that little sausage shaped bubble, bubble crown, okay? If you want to know what it looks like, look at our hat, the classic Panama, that's a bubble crown, and it's, instead of going down into the crown, it's coming up out of the crown. So it's not like the roof is coming in, it's not like the roof is flat, the roof is coming up, you know? It's coming up now, so yeah, well, probably not. It's probably equal to like about the top here. So it's like an even roof, yeah. So um, you, gotta let, uh, you get a lot more depth that way with a bubble crown. If you wanna create it on a center crease, it's the same effect except, you know, you have this piece in the middle, you're just kinda raising and lowering the whole thing, so. 
treat it like a whole little kind of a pear-shaped teardrop there and zap it with the hot steam, raise it up, keep it still, and leave it. So now you know how to do it for like an open road. It's the same exact technique for this. Okay, another problem with open roads is sometimes you bump into the creases too. There's no way to avoid that. Um, you're gonna do it and you might need little bubbles in the crease. I would say don't make it. Nature will make that happen if it has to happen. One thing you can do is you could line the inside of the hat there with uh, some Dr. Scholl's um, moleskin. It's a material that it's like a tape and it has like almost like the soft part of Velcro, you know, the fuzzy part. So it's like a, a pad with a heavy sticker and the pad is soft. So you put it on the inside and that will, that will keep you from, okay, yeah, you're touching these with your with your head, right? This is banging into your head, but at least you don't want to sweat through it. You don't want to have a sweat stain there and a sweat stain there on your, you know, silver belly, white open road. Um, if you're gonna bump into it and make little bumps here with your head, that's not such an unsightly thing. But yellow sweat stains, yes. So uh, two things will work. Mole skin, which is just sticks on. You could, uh, you know, make a whole piece and just go across or, uh, what I would do is just make a circle and a circle and put it on the inside. Wherever it touches your head, just let those two circles touch your head so the actual hat never touches your head, you know? And that's it. Um, you, you fix the top of the open road the same way as the center crease. Put those little pads in there, you'll be cool. Um, the only other one would be a pork pie or a gambler which is the easiest one of all. It's exactly like a teardrop, you know. But uh, instead of raising the teardrop, you're gonna just raise that whole circle, that whole middle. So with the pork pie, you raise this whole thing by steaming the middle and leaving the outside hard. And then just, I use like a fist and I just kinda, I raise it up, raise it a little. Steam it and raise it. Stop. Hold, 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 hold. Okay. A good way to fix this too is put this on your head, trace around it, trace around it, and make sure this is at the area you want it to be. So if you want it to almost touch your ear, bring it down to just about the ear, just about the ear. Trace around, add it, okay? Now, the only problem is when you take it off, okay, it's making a nice little impression, but it's round. You want this to be flat, okay? The last step is you steam that, okay? Steam it, steam it, steam it. Put it upside down on the tabletop like this, and then just pat down with your, your knuckles like this and flatten it across the tabletop while it's wet with steam. And that will flatten out just like the table, flat. Right in here, you're steaming it. Press it on the table and just press down in the middle like a pancake kind of, you know. Press down, down, down. Flatten it. And you get a nice flat surface there. You know, it's, it's a little flatter now, but if I had steamed it, it would stay more flat, flat, you know? But uh, it does work for all four shapes. Uh, cattleman, open road, um, center crease, teardrop, and gambler pork pie. They'll all take the, the home crown raisin. And it's something that a lot of people need just a little tiny bit of. If you do, you can just steam the top, pull it down on your head and trace like I did. And um, don't burn your head, you know. Wait a couple of seconds before you put it on your head. Steam it up. Maybe put your, you know, the soft part of your finger inside to feel the crown. See if it burns your fingers first. Then put it on your head. Start tracing around the bubble here. Or put it down to where it should be. If you want it to just touch your glasses frame or just miss your glasses frame, put it there, put it there. Trace around the bump. And you're making yourself a little bubble crown, but you're not giving yourself any extra room on that bubble, just enough to fit your head because it's, it's a customized imprint of your head. You just actually traced around your head. So all you might need is that, you know? Instead of making that big thing with your fingers, you just make that tiny bit that you needed. And sometimes it's so subtle, no one will ever see that, especially up at this level, you know? 
And if it's like that, it looks like nothing, but it will help the hat go deeper where you need it to sit, you know. Instead of being up there, it's down there and it locks down. Um, the other thing is that once you get it down to the right point and you're not obstructed by the top, you might find that your hat fits differently. You're like, wait a minute, I just noticed, now that I got more depth, I noticed my hat is too big or it's too tight or something. You didn't know before because this was bumping into your head and it was sitting up here and it was just like this weird fit. But once you get down to the right place where it's a good kind of like solid deep fit, you know, almost to your ear or touching your ear or whatever, you can tell now, like, because it's unobstructed. A good test for this is just pop it all out. Pop your hard crown out and then put your hat back on. See how it feels. If it feels different, like better, um, you might have been obstructed there that you need more depth. If it feels about the same fit, you're good, you know, nice and tight, just perfect, not too tight. But if something happens when you unpop this and then you test it, you're like, wait a minute, Kevin was right, this hat is too shallow, I need more depth. You could walk around like this and just try it for a while and be like, okay, that feels way better with the top out. What you do is now you adjust your fit using padding in the back, you know, under the leather, little foam, 3 8 inch uh, weather stripping. I use poly foam weather seal, 3 8 inch, it's fine. Adhesive weather, weather seal is good. And then, um, you know, put a little strip in, 6 inch, 7 inch, 4 inch, whatever, 8 inch, according to how much you need, under the leather in the back, okay? And now you know how your hat fits so you can fine tune it and stuff. Um, but as long as you're bumping into that top, you're not going to even know whether your hat... Sometimes my colleagues, they come up to me, they're like, um, Kev, is this hat too big or too small? I already know what the problem is, you know? So all the guys in JJ's are good, and they know how to measure hats, how to see hats, and so, you know, is this ties that's... They know, they know what's up. But every once in a while, somebody comes in with like a tall, you know, like a tall guy whose head is not like as deep as mine, his head is about this deep because he's just a bigger, taller guy, right? So instead of this hat fitting fine, you know, him, like I, I bump into about there, you know, I need a little, he needs, you know, way more room. He needs it up there. So the only way to fix this is to alter it by just bringing that center up. The hat is at this level. No one will see that center. That center, they won't even see it, but he'll feel it. He'll have the amount of depth that he needs in the hat. And it won't look like that. It'll look like this. You know what I'm saying? That's what the bubble crown is, okay? So today is all about the bubble crown. Well, I guess we found ourselves a topic, huh? Um, but yeah, I do that sometimes. I start with no topic. All right, guys. So make yourself a, a bubble crown. If you need more depth in your hat, just do it. Steam it, raise it up a little, take a second. And you saw the test, open it up, and now you know. But yeah. That's what happens. Um, guys come up to me, they say, Kev, is this hat too big or too small? And I know already that's the problem. Pop it out, guy. Let's see what happens when you pop that sucker. Well, you see that one pop out? Woo! You pop it out. Now try it and see how the thing fits. Oh, okay. Okay, now I, now I feel it. Because this thing was bumping into the head so badly that the hat was sitting up here. So, okay, we've always been taught that when hats are too high, it's too tight. You can't, the head, the hole is too small, right? So it's sitting high. But that's not happening here. It's just too shallow, okay? So the hat feels like it wants to blow off. Does that mean it's too loose? It's shaking around. But it's high. Does that mean it's too tight? I don't get it. All right? This is how you tell. Pop that sucker out. Try it now. You're finding out how is the fit just around the temple without any obstruction over here. That's irrelevant right now. We'll fix the crown later, you know? How is the fit around the temple? Now, you can tell it's revealed. Adjust it, get it right, or it's perfect, and, you know, just fix the depth. Sometimes the, the, the size was perfect. Other times it was too big, you know, or too small, but you don't know when it's obstructed there. So pop your crowns out, see how it fits, and, um, if you need a little bit more depth, um, it's real easy to do. Uh, find yourself a source of steam. Keep your hat away from the fire. The fire is way worse than steam. 
Um, remember, fire over here, head over here as far away from it as possible. Have it shooting out or something, yeah. And, uh, or buy like a little steamer, Norelco or something, they're crazy cheap. Um, a real jiffy steamer is more expensive, I'd imagine. You could buy them used for a hundred or something. Michael might, might know. Um, jiffy steamer is kind of an industry standard. Uh, I used one for all the very early videos at Pork Pie Hatters, our, our smaller store. Um, that's no longer around, yes, years ago. But, um, yeah, you could get one yourself, you know. And that is that. Okay, let me put this back on. Okay, play you suckers out.
Thank you. 